hello everybody and welcome back to my channel so a few things i wanted to show you guys today first off i have been wanting for the longest time to try and make some stickers using my new Cricut machine. To be honest, this is probably the main reason why I wanted a cutting machine in the first place. And yeah, for the art of these stickers, I decided to use some of my art that I already had. That included, as you can see, these uh, little Animal Crossing character designs, which I originally drew for my buttons, but I felt like they work perfectly for little die cut stickers. And as you can t see too, I also have one of my dragons. This is my bubble tea dragon here. And I've given it a little bit of a green outline just because I felt like it suited nicely with the theme and the original art did have green in the background. So I think it works pretty well. I also experimented a little bit with a few different papers. You probably can't tell, but I, I can tell. And one of them is the uh, sticker vinyl, which came with my Cricut machine. And a different paper that I decided to try out as well is one that I've used for hand cut stickers in the past. And that is uh, just like a a sticker paper from Officeworks which I actually really like. I also used a method which I saw people doing on TikTok <laughs> and that's where you actually get some clear book cover uh, like clear contact type thing and you put that over the page before you cut it out and that will give you actually a bit of a sort of a water resistant uh, finish and honestly I really like the look of those. I think the glossy look of the uh, clear contact really helped and it also added a nice bit of strongness to the stickers. Now I made these stickers for my online store and I'm actually going to be including some of these stickers for free in orders uh, for my prints and stuff like that. And I think they turned out really cute. Now that wasn't the only thing that I wanted to show you in this video. I also want to make some art and I've been wanting to make some more prints lately because I've kind of been neglecting my online shop a little bit and I decided I would do a Pokemon print to celebrate the release of the uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. And for inspiration and reference, I decided to use one of the new areas in the game. It's these like little Pokemon hideaways in the underground. And I just really liked the aesthetic of all of the rocks on the ground and the water falling down. And all of the colors I just felt looked really, really nice. And I wanted to try and capture that myself in a painterly style digital artwork. And I have to say, this artwork took me so much longer than I expected. This took me nine and a half hours and uh, for someone who has ADHD honestly that was a real struggle but I got through it and I really really liked the results and I can't wait to show them to you. So I started off drawing a sort of rough underpainting first with a gouache brush and this was just to get my foundations and my colors down and uh, start to rough out some details here and then I decided to draw some rocks over the top for the ground area and I first wanted to draw them all myself but then I just found out that that was just way too much work so I ended up uh, looking online and buying a sort of rocky brush texture which I honestly really love and then I ended up uh, using some shadows and highlights on the top of that and I also sort of transformed it and skewed it a little bit to make it look a little bit more 3D. I added a blending mode to that layer so that it looked like it was sort of underneath all of the bluey and greeny areas to try and get a translucent water effect and honestly I really like that. I think it looks pretty cool. Now was the time to add some more detail to the background here with this sort of rocky wall and I just used a few different textural brushes to get some nice sort of sandy rocky effects and then I built up some shadows and highlights roughly just to sort of define that a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a light source as well. After this on a separate layer I drew in some rough lines with some browns and yellows to try and get that sort of layered uh, sediment look to it where it's like got all of those different layers of different colors of rocks 
After this, I wanted to add in some water falling down from the ceiling of this cave. And I honestly love drawing waterfalls. I just think that they're so pretty. And if you do it right, it kind of just adds this mystical look to an artwork. And I'm really happy with all of the colors I added too, because I really wanted to sort of uh, push the sort of bluey green aesthetic. <laughs> and for that, I ended up using a one of the oil paint brushes I think it was and I just did a lot of up and down lines and that helped me to make a waterfall texture. Now we have a lovely little scene here but it is definitely missing something and that is all of the Pokemon. I couldn't decide which Pokemon I wanted to feature mainly on this artwork so I decided on a few different ones and as you can probably guess they are mainly water type Pokemon. With the addition of Luxray, just because I love Luxray <laughs> so much, it's one of my favourite Sinnoh Pokemon. And for that I actually used a lion drinking water as a reference because I, I wanted a reason for Luxray to be in there. And that is, maybe this is his favourite spot to drink water from. Not gonna lie, that water does look pretty nice and refreshing if I say so myself. Now for drawing the Pokemon, I didn't use any like really fancy techniques. I kind of wanted to go with a line art look similar to how Pokemon themselves draw the official art for their Pokemon. But I did decide to use a thinner line art brush than I normally would just because I wanted to sort of have a s slight realistic look to them, even though they're like line art, like comic style. <laughs> I still wanted to like emphasize the colors a little bit more and I feel like when I draw with thick lines it ends up looking more cartoony. Now I wanted these colors to sort of match the environment they were in so to actually get the colors I were going to use for this Pokemon I actually imported an image of that Pokemon and then I lowered the opacity just a little bit to get those background colors to show through a little bit more and then what I would do is I would color drop that and that is what I would use to color in these Pokemon. Now I did change it slightly just to add a little bit of contrast here and there but I think that that was a pretty good move to make sure that the colors fit the environment and they sort of reflect the mood that the background has. After Luxray, I decided to draw some Wingo because I wanted some flying type Pokemon just flying through up there. And I decided on Wingo because it is a water type. <laughs> and then after that, I went in with Buizel and he is a little water type Weasel Pokemon. He's very, very cute. And then after that, I went in with Shellos, which is like a little sea slug creature. He's really cute too. And I, and I really like the way that I drew them. After this, I decided it needed another Pokemon in the background and I ended up going with Milotic just because it is a really pretty Pokemon and I felt like the colors would really help to brighten this up a little bit and uh, it's definitely something different than like something you would normally think like Gyarados. Also, Milotic is just one of my favorite Pokemon as well. I just find it really pretty to look at and uh, yeah, I just had to add it in there because why not? After this, I decided to add in an Azumarill and an Azuril, <laughs> and just mainly because I found those Pokemon very, very cute, and they're water types as well, so they definitely fit the scene. Once I got all of the Pokemon done, I decided to add in reflections of them in the water, and this part was honestly so fun. I just duplicated the layers that the Pokemon were on and then I used the liquify tool to sort of like smudge it around a bit so that obviously it looks like it's you know a reflection in the water. I think it turned out really cool and it definitely adds a lot to the whole piece. Now if you like this artwork I'm actually going to make this available as a print on my online shop and now that I've mentioned my online shop I just want to say that I'm going to add a bit of a sale to all of uh, the items on my shop so definitely check that out I'll have a link in the description I'm not sure how long the sale will go for but uh, yeah should be good and free stickers with every purchase too because who doesn't love stickers so here is the final results for this artwork and I honestly love it so much after I exported it I actually like import it into Affinity Photo and just like pushed some of the more cyan colors just so that I could really get this piece nice and blue looking and honestly I love it so much. 
So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like and subscribe to get your scribble fix in the future. Stay safe out there and I shall see you in my next video. Bye everyone.